Decision making in an organization is key and it has the following key elements. Number one is objectives. You need to be able to set your objectives. What do we intend to achieve? Where are we going? What do we have to do? What is our goal? How do we get? The objectives are the set of lines highlighted to achieve your goals. And then you must also have alternatives. Alternative A, B, and C. Which one are you going to use out of these alternatives? You cannot just use that knowledge. So let's just go for this one. It's beyond that, you cannot be doing that when it has to do with uh, great complex situations where there is risk. If you make any mistake now, there's a likelihood that you will lose a lot of money and you don't want to take that risk. So you must have a set of alternatives and then you decide how to pick the alternatives. We are going to still talk more about that as we go on. The another one is influencing factors. Are there some constraints for you to achieving this goal? If there are some constraints, you have to lay them down. You have to also include these constraints in your model. The applications now of operations research. You will find the application of operation research in many areas of life. Number one is allocation and distribution. Optimal allocation of limited resources. Resources are scarce. Whether you are talking about human resource, machines, material, time, and money, extremely scarce. Then how do you manage these cast resources? You have to allocate correctly, optimally such that you don't need too much. The another one is machines. You must be able to say, oh, wait a minute, we don't need this much, this number of machines there. And I think if we go with four, we'll still be able to give us, I mean, get the same output from what we want to do. The another one is materials. Materials must not be too much. At the same time, it must not be insufficient. So also for time and money. In fact, the money in itself is even very scarce. It's a very scarce resource. Hardly can even find enough in, in dealing with anything. And then another one is location and size of warehouses. We are still discussing allocation and distribution now. Another bullet under that is location and size of warehouses. What size of warehouse do we sink to keep our materials? If we have too small area, and then the materials they are keeping, they actually need ventilation. That will be a problem for that particular material. So we must be able to say, this is the size of the materials that we need, or rather this is the size of the warehouse that will accommodate all our materials. So you need the application of OR to be able to do that. That the wall, at the same time is distribution. How do you manage your distribution? How do you manage, take for example Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola product they produce in Nasegire, Nevada, and they have to distribute to all the parts of the country, all the states, statistics states in the country. There's nobody in this country who does not take Coca-Cola. If maybe like five percent do not take Coca-Cola, but at least ninety-five percent of the population, about two hundred million, that are taking Coca-Cola, how do they get it distributed to them? So it is all the plannings of the operations research that can assist you to handle this complex situation. Because look at taxi states in Nigeria. And in those states, you have 774 local governments. I mean, within each state as well, you also have a number of uh, cities. Within each city, you also have different locations where you have your distributors. You also have different locations as well, where you have your retailers. So another one is distribution policy. What could give you all the things that you need to do is uh, the application of your operations research. Another point here is procurement. Procurement has to do with purchases that you bring in into the organization. Purchase of materials, purchase of things you need to do. You need to know, you need to be able to decide or determine what do we need to purchase. How do we make the purchases? And when do we purchase? And as you do that, you want to do it at the minimum procurement cost. So take for example a particular product, you know, most of the raw materials that we use today, Especially if um, you are maybe a beverage company, uh, food and beverages, you want to produce pineapple. You know, pineapple ran the whole year. You will not see pineapple run the whole year. It is seasonal. So hardly, you, there's a likelihood that you get uh, some perishable goods at the point in time. And then you look for how to manage them, how to stock them, how to preserve them, such that when you get to a particular year, you will not be half of production. Because if you don't have materials, there is nothing you can do. And you don't have enough in your in, in storage, then there's a likelihood 
that your production will be halted, and you don't want that to happen. Another one is bidding and replacement policies. You should be able to know how to bid. And at the same time, how do you replace the equipment in your offices? If you use machine A today, machine B and machine C, each of those equipment, they have their expiry dates, which is rather called end of life of that equipment. If you don't know the end of life of that equipment, and you, are, you continue to use, let's say, an equipment that's supposed to end its life by, say, five years, and you have been using it for six years, you find out that you'll be having a lot of downtime. Break down, equipment break down, and then you have to call the engineer to work on it for another four hours, and then you shut down the, 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 the plants for another four hours before you fix the equipment. So you, mo you shouldn't let that happen. You have to know and have what we call replacement policies. Another one is production and facility planning. You should be able to decide what are we going to select what do you we really want to select what do, uh, what uh, uh, factory what plant should we select and then which location should we sink this plant say for example somebody who is thinking of uh, uh, mass producing pork pork meat and then they say oh, wait, a, wait a minute i think there is money in dubai let's go and site this uh, factory in dubai Number one, not only that the government will not support you to do that, the government of Dubai will not support you to do that because it is haram. It is against their religion. At the same time, you will also not get the raw materials to continue your production. So as you think about your location as well, you have to look at a number of things. Nearness to market, good roads as well, and the acceptability of the environment, the people. Will they accept this product you are thinking of bringing it into their into their community you have to factor them as well and then the design of plants as well design of production plants you won't just wake up and just begin to grow anything or just give it to a quark because it's a factory it must be standardized then another thing under production and facility planning is um, project scheduling and allocation of resources i've talked about allocation of resources the allocation of your resources has to be more, more optimal and if your allocation of resources has to be optimal what do you do? You will not do it by guesses. There are some things you have to put in place. So we're going to see all of that. Then preparation of forecast for various inventory items and competing economic order quantity and the other levels. In an organization, you are working, you have some materials you are using for your production as input, you are processing them, and you are delivering your hard school. It is therefore a good practice for you to ensure that none of your items your input items, raw materials are exhausted before you reorder for another one. Now, that's what we call reorder level. Reorder level is the is the minimum amount of items which must be in stock before a firm will reorder for another set. And there is a time lag between the time that you order for an item and the time that the item will be delivered to your firm. So this a time is referred to as the lead time. It's the waiting time before the ordered products or items will be delivered to your plant. You must ensure that within that lead time, within that lead time, you have enough materials to be used before the next one will be supplied to your factory. Now imagine an entrepreneur who wants to set up a shoe factory. What does it need to put in place? Now let's discuss determination of the number and size of the items to be produced. It should, it should size 44, where we have multiple of people with um, small sizes, like say size 40 and 41. So this is very important. Another one is um, um, reliability and control of development projects. And then selection of projects and preparation for their budgets. You should be able to prepare for the budget of different uh, projects. Another application of OR is finance. How do you know the amount of capital that will be needed to sink that plant? How do you know the amount of capital that will be needed to bring in a lot of materials that you need? And then you also need your cash flow analysis. Another one is credit policies. Do you have policies in your organization to allow people to take credits? So all of these things has to be in place. 
and then if they take credit, you have provision for how you are going to be getting this money back from them. It's going to be monthly on a weekly basis. Then profit plan for the company. Profit plan for the company. We also need to say, oh, wait a minute, this is what we plan to make this year. But I plan to make a particular amount in a year. You have to be careful and know how to plan this. Another one is the termination of optimum replacement policy. I talked about this the other time. The last one here, which is not the least, is personnel. Personnel, how do you select your personnel? How do you determine their retirement age and their skills? If you want to select your personnel, you, you have your adverts. So all the interview, here and then you are watching them to be sure, is this person really right for us? Beyond the interview, most of the time when people are called for interview, they will be laid there for a few hours, say two, three, four, five hours before they attend to them. And they are watching them behind the scene on the camera in the close circle television to look at their temperament, to watch their temperament, to see the way they are going to react to that. Some people will be complaining there in that waiting room. Oh, these people now, eh? they gave us several o'clock. We, we, we arrived there at 6 a.m. And yet they have not attended to us. They already know from there. This will be a complaint. They might even, you know, use that technology to knock you out. So all of these things are very important. And then as you, as you, as you employ your people, I also talk about putting the right peg in the right hole.